can um, send information to our router and our router is replying to it. Uh, what we use for that is we're going to go to our command prompt. Um, if you don't know how to access it, you can go to the run box and type CMD. Or uh, Windows 7 people can go command prompt in the search bar. Click that. Windows XP guys, it will be in all programs. I, th I haven't used XP for ages, but accessories. Uh, then, yeah, command prompt. It will be the same for XP. It's same for Vista as well. So, once we're here, what we want to do is uh, basically we can see the information we saw in network information, you know, then for the information here through there by typing IPv IP config and we get that information, same information here, there, not as in depth here. If we wanted to do that, we can do IP config forward slash all. This will give us the same information as we are seeing here, just in a different format. Okay, so what we want to do is our default gateway is 192.168.0.1, that's the IP address of it. What we're going to do is we are going to ping 192.168.0.1. What ping is, is a, yeah, uh, a network tool, uh, protocol, ICMP, Internet uh, Internet Control Message Protocol. And ping stands for Packet Internetwork Groper. Uh, it sends some information, small amounts of information to a device. The device will reply. Uh, that means you've got connectivity to that device uh, using ping. Obviously, firewalls, um, for people who don't know, a firewall um, it can exist on a router or a host that may disallow the use of ping, may block that uh, protocol. So be careful. Don't always assume because you can't ping it that you can't access it. It may have a web server on it where you can um, access a web page, um, but won't allow ping connections. So what I'm going to, my router does. So I'm going to show you what happens when we ping our router. So as we're seeing, we're getting a reply from our router. Reply from one nine two one six eight zero dot one. We sent 32 bytes of information. It took one millisecond for that type for that, that information to reach the router and come back to us. Uh, the time to live it was 255. The time to live, I believe, uh, means how many hops the information will take before it expires, before the packet dies, basically. So we we uh, sent 32 bytes of information four times. Uh, by default, that's what ping does. Um, and we got one, two, one, one. So one millisecond, two millisecond, one millisecond. Um, so basically, we've got um, connection to our router through ping. Um, what you may want to do, you know, uh, for extensive monitoring, is you can ping continuously to that device to check that um, the network. Uh, its network functionality is okay. You know, you don't. You want to. You might want to check if it's intermittent. Um, again, uh, take note that if you are seeing intermittent connection, it might not be the router. It might not be the other device. It may be you. Maybe your wireless card is uh, not functioning properly. Um, the way you'd verify this. Okay, let me show you the basics first. The ping one nine two one six eight zero dot one minus T. Notice the minus T at the end. This is going to ping continuously. <coughs> so we're seeing a stable connection. You know, for wireless connection, this is a very stable connection. Normally you might see um, where cases of interference, I say, yeah, there you go, look, a in bit piece of interference there. The it spikes because it uh, took longer for the to get to the router, for the router to process it and send it back to us. Um, you know, with a wireless connection, you c you may experience this because of interference. Copper cables, if you're hardwired, are not subs uh, are less susceptible to interference than what a wireless connection would be. So we're just going to stop that now by pressing Control and C on our keyboard, and we get a summary uh, result here. So this is good because we sent full tier and received full tier. If you're running this for a long time, you might, you know, it's, it'd be stupid to go through looking through uh, where the connection was dropped. So you can see if the connection was dropped. Um, it will say lost packets. 
you know, typically I would um, over sort of you know a couple of hours period uh, with a wireless connection, I would I would see you know a one percent perhaps a one percent loss, uh, depending on experience. You, you know, you, you may you you may never see loss um, if you are hardwired with a cable. Um, I would my expected result would be to never see loss. Um, if you did see loss, you've got some interference on the cable or your router's not functioning properly or alternatively your your own network card inside your computer is not functioning properly. So now we've established connection to our router, we know we've got connection to our router, have we got ins have we got connection to the internet? Well we know we have because we can look here and see, but again I told you that that's not always true. So how do we how do we see if we've got connection to the internet? Well the way that I would do it um, is I would ping uh, an internet address, so um, a well-known internet address that you know is probably not going to have much downtime, which uh, is, let's take for instance Google, ping google.co.uk. Um, we can ping Google and see if we've got connection to it. There you go, we've got connection to it. So if you were continuously monitoring Google, you know, if you continuously pinged it, um, how would you um, and you had an outage, you had you know packet lost, you didn't have a reply. Um, by the way, if you didn't get a reply, you would have the message request timed out or destination host unreachable. There are a few other messages, but the gist is that if you get an, an, a message aside from reply from that address, you know, Google, its IP address, you haven't got connection to it. Um, so, yeah, back to how would you verify that it's... Um, uh, you know, not your internet connection that's down. Well, you'd ping another address, bbc.co.uk. Um, so basically, if you get packet loss from Google, you're not seeing a reply from Google, but you get a reply from BBC, your internet lines still up because you can get to BBC, and BBC is externally located from you. So <clears throat> we can just deduce from that that Google Google's down. Okay, so how would... Um, so if you do get request timed out um, and your internet line is down, what can you do about it? Well, the first port of call is to obviously check that your router's on. Uh, check that you've got connection to your router. You know, ping 192.168.0.1. Yeah, that's on. Um, then go to the router. Um, you know, on on the front of the router you'll have lights, some LED lights. Most routers have LED lights that tell you status. You know, link, blah blah blah, whatever. Uh, you should have one for internet internet line. Um, look in the manual; it'll tell you which one. See if that light's on. You know, if it's on, then it, there's there's a there may be a line there, but you might not have internet connectivity. So, the next the next uh, step you go to is you ring your ISP, your internet service provider, and ask you know what the hell's going on. I'm paying for a service, I'm not getting it. Um, and you know you'll have some um, you'll be loaded with some. Uh, some knowledge of what they're going to ask you. They're probably going to ask you to do some things that I've just done here. They're going to ask you to verify the connection. Is it on? Blah, blah, blah. It's quite annoying after a while because you, you can't just say to them, you know, oh, it's working. I've tested it. They want you to test it um, before they'll go any further. So that brings me to the end of um, my, my network troubleshooting video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I hope it's been informative for you. Any feedback, please leave a comment or a question. Just leave a comment or inbox me. Thank you very much.